within so in your paper you also looked at kind of more acute inflammation and the effect that it had on um, CD38 expression um, and looking at uh, LPS lipopolysaccharide uh, so lipo I believe this also increases with age is that is that correct? And does it have kind of a similar effect on the, uh, I guess, on CD38 expression? Uh, yeah, so in our paper, we actually use lipopolysaccharide as um, a way to make the macrophage as an M1 macrophage. Mm. And what we saw is when you treat a macrophage uh, with LPS, it causes a rapid increase in CD38 and degradation of, of NAD. Uh, so what we decided to do was use um, to inject mice with LPS to see if we could see a similar decrease of NAD levels in response um, to LPS challenge. And indeed we did, and we, we also did a sensitivity 38 knockout mice, which were, were for the most part protected from this decline of NAD, um, proving that um, NAD levels decline in mice as a result of LPS. Um, but what's actually interesting about LPS is, um, you know, we were doing these studies artificially where we're injecting a bolus of LPS and mostly younger mice. Mm. Um, but there is, there is evidence that during the aging process that you, that um, some endotoxins may be, leaky, um, may be leaking out of our guts mm -hmm. during, during the aging process. So there may, be, there may be a natural way LPS accumulates in our bodies during aging, and that's through um, what we call the leaky gut. Right, which would then lead to a, like another path by which CD38 is being increased and, and that would not be targeted through, this, through senescent cells. So it, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so we need to try to understand what are the major drivers of the inflammation that is causing macrophages mm -hmm. to increase CD38. Um, what we found in our paper is um, this link to senescent cells, but there, of course, as you mentioned, there may be other paths that we didn't account for as well. Right, interesting. So kind of, kind of moving towards wrapping up on this. So, I, and we, I think we've covered we talked about this to some degree. So if we want to inhibit CD38, right? So we want to try and protect our NAD levels as we get older. And so one of the, one of the things that we would seem to work based on CD knockout mice is we try and inhibit the actions of CD38. Uh, and I can see that there's, you know, like there's different ways we could do this, like trying to reduce senescent cells or um, trying to recover the salvage pathway or directly inhibit CD38 um, through small molecules. Uh, so do you, do you have, uh, so what would your thoughts be on that? I mean, what would be the kind of the best way of trying to restrict uh, CD38 expression? Um, or like, should we use multiple ways <laughs> of trying to do that? Yeah, so there's, um, um, at least two ways we could target CD38 directly. That's with small molecules. So there, there are already some that exist, such as 78C, um, which will work, um, work at nanomolar levels to directly inhibit CD38 in the very specific. Um, there's also some natural compounds such as flavonoids, um, apigenin and quercetin have also been shown to inhibit CD38. Uh, although these also target a lot of other um, signaling pathways and, and un have other off-target effects. Um, there's also the, the recent development of antibodies, uh, which can also bind to CD38 and stop its enzymatic function as well. So um, the, these different molecules um, so far have been tested in mice that seem to be effective in, in inhibiting CD38. Um, I don't think any human trials have been done on them yet though. Um, so I right. think that remains in the future. Um, but as you mentioned as well, that there's other ways we could inhibit CD38 um, indirectly. And that means by blocking the inflammation that is driving its expression. Um, there's different ways that we, we could do that as well. Right. And, and so one of those would be, I, I guess, through senolytics to kind of reduce the, the overall, the, the number of senescent cells, since they seem to be a major driver of CD38 expression. Yes, yeah, so you could either inhibit senescent cells, which is one of the major upstream sources of inflammation, mm. or we could also do interventions that are known to dampen inflammation. And this includes, for example, exercise, as well as uh, caloric restriction and other things that have been proven to, to be anti-inflammatory or have anti-inflammatory properties associated with them. Right. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. So I think that I, that's a, that's a great um, in-depth view of, of 
NAD and CD38 and, and where we are right now. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.